Hey everyone, you're gonna have to brace yourself for a thrilling adventure as we count down the top 15 scariest tourist attractions in the world, each offering a hard racing experience for those brave enough to explore them. Let's begin with number 15, the CN Tower Edgewalk in Canada. So the CN Tower in Toronto, Canada was, for 32 years after being built in 1975, the tallest freestanding structure in the world. While it no longer holds this record, it's still an incredible building and attracts people from all over the world for the amazing views. In an attempt to cater to some thrill seekers, however, a new feature was added in 2011, which is sure to push you to the limit. It's known as the CN Tower Edge Walk. It's the world's highest full circle, hands free walk. Positioned on a five foot wide ledge that surrounds the top of the tower's main pod, participants find themselves at an insane height of 1168 feet above the ground. From there, you're treated to a 360-degree panoramic view of the surrounding city in Lake Ontario, from a vantage point that few others experience. Those who are brave enough to take it on are given specialized suits to wear and are harnessed to an overhead safety rail via a trolley and harness system. Now, this setup ensures safety, while allowing you to freely walk around the edge of the tower's roof during an experience that lasts around 30 minutes. With trained staff on hand, you can even lean out over the edge, so it's perhaps no surprise that the CN Tower Edgewalk has become a must-visit for those who are looking for an adrenaline-packed adventure. Number 14. The Devil's Pool in Zambia Zambia is a country that's known for its landscapes, its natural features, and its wildlife, but there's one place that's really going to push even the most intrepid adventurers to their limit. It's called the Devil's Pool. It's part of the Victoria Falls, which is one of the tallest and most well-known waterfalls in the world. On the Zambian side, there's a natural rock pool right up against the edge of where the water cascades over, but the water's calm in the pool, and you can swim into it. During the dry season, the water levels of the Zambezi River drop just enough to expose the rock barrier that forms the pool. Now, this natural formation creates a relatively safe swimming area that you can wade in. There are, of course, some risks involved in doing this, and it's not simply something you can find on your own. Access is granted through guided tours, which ensure the safety of everyone taking part. The journey to the pool itself is an adventure, involving a boat ride to Livingston Island, followed by a short swim. While it is probably the most scary place you could ever go into the water at first, you'll soon settle into the surroundings and begin to take in the stunning landscape. The falls, known locally as Mosi Oyatunya, or the smoke that thunders, creates a spectacular backdrop. The panoramic views of the river and the gorge are unlike anything else, and it'll surely be a memory that stays with you forever. Number 13. Insanity Ride at the Stratosphere, Las Vegas so, with competition for visitors, venues in Vegas continue to push limits, and if you're looking for thrills, there's no better place to go. At the top of the list of things to do is the Insanity Ride at the Stratosphere in Las Vegas, but it's certainly not for the faint of heart. At a height of approximately 900 feet or over 275 meters above the Las Vegas Strip, it offers one of the most thrilling amusement experiences in the world. The ride extends over the edge of the stratosphere tower, providing not only an intense thrill, but also an unparalleled view of the cityscape, assuming you're able to keep your eyes open while you're on it. First introduced in 2005, it features a massive mechanical arm that reaches 64 feet or almost 20 meters over the side of the tower. At the end of this arm are five open-air seats that clamp riders in with over-the-shoulder harnesses. Once secured in place, the insanity begins. The ride starts by spinning and gradually increasing speed while the arm extends the riders until they're tilted at 70 degrees to the building. This position not only has riders facing downwards towards the strip, but also spins them in a circular motion, creating a centrifugal force that intensifies. At its peak, insanity can reach speeds that generate a force of up to 3 Gs on the riders, ensuring it lives up to that name. So, it's set in the heart of Las Vegas, and at such a height, it's the combination of factors that makes it so unique. You may well find a faster one or a more precarious ride elsewhere in the world, but it's clear why, for true thrill seekers, insanity is an absolute must visit. Oh yeah, and although for the time being it has been closed with no news on when or if it'll ever reopen. Number 11. Hopar Villa, Singapore Haw Par Villa, which was originally known as the Tiger Bomb Gardens, is one of the weirdest theme parks in the world. It was built in Singapore in 1937 by the Burmese Chinese brothers Aw Boon Haw and Aw Boon Par, who created the world-famous Tiger Bomb Ointment, and is themed in line with stories from traditional Chinese folklore, moral values, and mythology. 
The park's best known for having more than a thousand statues and 150 dioramas that tell different stories, such as tales from the classic Chinese novels and various aspects of Confucian ideology. It is mostly quite entertaining, but there's one section that's been known for scaring the hell out of visitors who don't know what to expect. That's because there's an entire area dedicated to the Ten Courts of Hell, which offers a graphic representation of the punishments given out in the underworld for sins that have been committed in this life, according to traditional Chinese beliefs and mythology. There's a purposeful joy and horror in the park, as the intent of the founders was to provide a place where parents could teach their children about morality and ethics, using the displays as a way to explain the consequences of good and bad behavior, with storytelling being an important means of education, at least for moral lessons in Chinese culture. At its peak, it was a hugely popular local attraction, but interest waned with the development of modern entertainment. In recent years, however, there's been a renewed interest in the park, seen more now as a treasure trove of Southeast Asian culture and history. Efforts have been made to preserve it as a unique cultural site, with the Singapore Tourism Board taking over its management and performing various refurbishment. Number 10. Step into the Void, the French Alps People have been climbing the highest mountains in the French Alps as a challenge or for fun since at least the 18th century. But there's only a certain type of person that this appeals to. In order to try to encourage a wider variety of tourists to the region, authorities have encouraged the development of new attractions, and one of the most frightening in recent times is called Step into the Void. Located at the summit of Aiguille du Midi, which is a mountain in the Mont Blanc Massif, it's at an altitude of over 12,000 feet or about 3,800 meters, and is a glass skywalk that offers a thrilling experience for visitors who are brave enough. The attraction, which opened in December of 2013, is essentially a glass box suspended off the side of the mountain, providing stunning views of the surrounding alpine peaks. The box is made entirely of glass, including the floor, walls, and ceiling, with each panel being half an inch or about 12 millimeters thick and made from three layers of tempered glass. These glass panels are further reinforced with multiple layers of transparent film, ensuring they can withstand the harsh weather conditions and extreme temperatures. The construction was also designed to handle the strong winds that can whip across the mountain face, as well as the weight of several people at once. The good news is that you don't have to climb the mountain to reach it, and you can instead take a cable car, although some people may find this to be enough of a challenge. The cable car journey too offers some pretty stunning views as it rises through the mountains, and then once at the summit you can explore the terraces to acclimate to the altitude before stepping into the glass cube, where the illusion is that of standing in the open air with nothing but a sheer drop in the vast expanse of the Alps below. Number 9. Hartley's Creek Crocodile Farm, Australia Of course it's in Australia. It's known for having countless animals that can potentially be quite dangerous, but there's none as vicious as the saltwater crocodile. Normally you'd be advised to stay as far away from possible from them, but there's a place where you're encouraged to get much closer. Hartley's Crocodile Adventures, which is located near Cairns in Queensland, is a crocodile farm, but also a large wildlife park that focuses on conservation and education. Established in 1934, the site began as a tea house and roadhouse for travelers, but evolved over time into a dedicated environmental and wildlife rescue center. Today, it's one of the longest continually operating tourist attractions in Queensland, and is in an area that perfectly replicates the natural habitat of the animals, covering almost 25 acres of land surrounded by wet tropics. Hartley's Crocodile Adventures, of course, provides a safe environment to watch these predators, but you'll still feel too close for comfort. The park is home to both saltwater and freshwater crocs, and the best time to see them is during the famous crocodile feeding shows. During these demonstrations, expert handlers share fascinating insights about the biology, behavior, and conservation of crocodiles, and show their true power as they take their food. If you want to get even closer, you can also take a boat cruise in the lagoon, where you'll see the crocodiles in a more natural setting, gliding through the water or basking on the banks. While the venue encourages people to visit the crocodiles as an attraction, it does so while ensuring the welfare of all the animals in the park and contributing to their conservation across the wider region. Number 8. Erta Ale, Ethiopia Erta Ale, which is in the northeastern part of Ethiopia, is one of the most visually spectacular active volcanoes in Africa. It's known as Smoking Mountain by the locals and Gateway to Hell by others. Erta Ale has an unusual feature that's made it popular draw for visitors. 
As a shield volcano and part of the East African Rift System, it has a persistent active lava lake, one of only five in the world, which has been in a state of continuous eruption since the early 20th century. The volcano reaches an altitude of just over 2,000 feet, or about 613 meters, but despite this relatively low height, the journey to the summit is a challenge. The terrain is rugged and the climate is one of the hottest on Earth, making access to the volcano extremely tricky. Usually treks to the volcano are undertaken during the night to avoid the scorching daytime temps. It is a worthwhile adventure though, because the sight of the bubbling bright orange lava is a major contrast to the barren moon-like surrounding landscape. You'll feel the heat in the ground beneath you, but the constant possibility of a larger eruption isn't the only danger you'll need to overcome. Political instability in the area also means it's only safe to visit the volcano as part of a guided tour, which are usually accompanied by armed guards to ensure everyone's safety. Well, despite the risks, it's undoubtedly one of the most stunning sights there is to see in the world, allowing you to see the true power of geological activity up close, so long as you're brave enough, which I'm definitely not. Moving on to number 7, the Bohol Zipline Bike in the Philippines. So the Chocolate Hills in the Philippines are an incredible formation of more than 1,200 hills over an area of 20 square miles that have become one of the country's most popular attractions. Most people will take in the site from ground level or from the top of one of the hills, but there's another option for those looking to take things to the next level, a zipline bike. Also known locally as the Rush, this experience combines the thrill of ziplining with the freedom of cycling, offering an unforgettable aerial ride through an incredible landscape. The cable crosses an 1,800-foot gap between two of the tallest hills, and when you're on it, you're treated to panoramic views of the entire region. Beginning with a safety briefing and gearing up session, you're then harnessed to a specially designed bicycle that's attached to a steel cable. The bike itself is fixed on a trolley that rolls along the cable as you pedal, in a setup that's a unique twist on traditional zip lining. It is possible to build up quite some speed as you cross, and you'll experience a strange sensation with the combination of adrenaline rush of the ride and the serene feeling of just looking across a vast surrounding. Since opening, it's become one of the best ways to explore the Chocolate Mountains, as long as you're okay with the heights. Number 6. Island of the Dolls, Mexico The Island of the Dolls is a famous and incredibly creepy destination in the channels of the Xochimilco River just to the south of Mexico City. Shrouded in local myths and a haunting history, visitors to the island will find a dark exhibition of hundreds of old, decrepit dolls that are hanging from trees and other structures, making it a must-see place for those interested in the paranormal. The background of how this came into being is a sad story, and began with the island's only inhabitant, Don Julian Santana Barrera. According to a local legend, a young girl gone missing somewhere in the river, and soon after, Barrera saw a floating doll near to where she had been seen. Believing it to have been belonging to the girl, he hung it on a tree as a mark of respect and to support her spirit. He then became convinced that she was haunting him, so he continued to hang more dolls as he found them or traded for, claiming that each one was infused with the spirit of the girl and that hanging them up was the only way he could protect himself from evil. Over the following decades, he filled the island with as many dolls as he could. Some were missing limbs, others covered in dirt, and all have been battered by the weather to create a haunting atmosphere. Today, the island of the dolls is accessible by boat through the canals of the Xochimilco, with the entire region being a UNESCO World Heritage Site known for its extended series of waterways and ancient floating gardens. Number 5. Flying Kisses Ride, China now, in the past few decades, a number of unique experiences have been built in China to take advantage of the country's vast landscapes. You've likely seen a number of glass bridges, some of which have fake cracks in them to terrify people walking across them. But the most unusual attraction of all is the Flying Kisses Ride. Found in the scenic Hunan province, it's officially called the Bailong Elevator, and it's famous for offering passengers a unique vantage point of the National Forest Park, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is far from being your typical amusement park ride. It's made up of a pair of statues representing a man and a woman, which are designed to function as viewing platforms. These statues rotate and move vertically, mimicking the motion of flying kisses, and the ride reaches up to 300 feet in the air, allowing visitors to rise up alongside the towering quartzite sandstone pillars, which are among the most iconic natural features in the region, and the ones that are said to have inspired the floating mountains in Avatar. 
The ride offers an unrivaled view of the park's geological formations, dense vegetation, and as the statues rise and face each other, visitors also experience a ride that evokes a sense of romance and adventure. Although the speed it moves and the height it reaches has been known to cause some unfortunate reactions in visitors. It's been cleverly designed, though, and uses advanced mechanical systems that ensure safety and stability. The engineering challenges faced during construction were pretty big, considering the delicate nature of the park's ecosystem and the need to preserve it. By entwining it with Chinese culture, the depiction of the man and woman in a romantic, almost celestial interaction almost makes it look like an ancient artwork rather than a modern design. With the success of this one, there's planned to build rides in other regions that are also steeped in the traditional Chinese aesthetic and philosophical ideas. So who knows, what might come next? Number 4. Venthaven Museum of Ventriloquism, Kentucky There's a museum somewhere in the world just about for anything you can think of, and while many are scary and frightening because of the collections they display, there's one place that's almost guaranteed to creep you out. The Venthaven Museum, which is in the town of Fort Mitchell in Kentucky, is, as far as the owners are aware, the only museum in the world that's dedicated entirely to ventriloquism. Founded in 1973, the objects on display here originally belonged to William Shakespeare Berger, a Cincinnati businessman and amateur ventriloquist whose passion for the craft led him to amass a vast collection. Having expanded substantially since then, it now houses over 900 ventriloquist figures from the 19th and 20th centuries, some of which date back to the early 1800s. The figures vary widely in appearance, from the intricately carved to the humorously exaggerated, each bearing its own story and legacy. The collection not only showcases the artistic craftsmanship involved in creating these figures, but also reflects the challenges in stylistic preferences and technological advancements over the years. The museum's layout takes you on a journey through the history of ventriloquism, with each exhibit being curated to display a different era or aspect of the art. Rare photographs, playbills, and recordings accompany these figures, and through these artifacts you can trace the careers of some of the most famous ventriloquists, including Edgar Bergen, Paul Winchell, and Jeff Dunham, and their impact on popular culture. It's also here where the annual Venthaven Convention is held, which attracts ventriloquists from all around the world and provides a platform for professionals and aspiring ventriloquists to learn. If, like many people, the dolls and ventriloquism in general are unpleasant to you, then this is one place you'll want to avoid. Number 3. The Alnwick Poison Garden in the UK Lovely gardens are some of the most popular visitor attractions in countries all over the world, and the expansive and historic grounds of Alnwick Castle in the county of Northumberland in the UK is one of the best there is. With themed areas, water features, and plenty more over 42 acres, it first opened in 1750 and has been continually improved ever since. One of the newer parts that was opened in 2005, though, is probably the scariest formal garden you could ever go to, though, as it's nothing like the serene landscapes that surround it. Called the Alnwick Poison Garden, it's an area that's dedicated to the world's most toxic plants, and it's full of the most dangerous and narcotic species of all. You aren't allowed to go in on your own and must be accompanied by an expert tour guide. When you enter, you're met with black gates with a simple warning. These plants can kill. Well, this sets the ominous tone for the journey ahead, and inside the garden has around a hundred plants that have been carefully cultivated and contain their own stories, often tied to history, medicine, and mythology. The Poison Garden's collection includes well-known deadly plants like belladonna, hemlock, and ricin-producing castor oil plants, alongside more commonplace but still dangerous species such as foxglove and oleander. Each plant is presented with information based on its effects, the symptoms of poisoning, and its historical uses. For example, belladonna, also known as the deadly nightshade, has a long history of use as a beauty enhancer in ancient Rome and a deadly poison in medieval Europe. The Duchess of Northumberland was inspired to create the Poison Garden to engage and educate visitors, particularly young people, about the natural world's dangers and wonders. The educational aim of the Poison Garden extends to highlighting the medicinal properties of some plants. Many of these toxins, under controlled conditions, have been or are being used in pharmaceuticals to treat a range of conditions, and it's this dual nature of plants, both poisonous and beneficial, that's a central theme of the garden. Number 2. Bran's Castle, Transylvania Bran Castle, which is better known as Dracula's Castle, is sat on the border between the regions of Transylvania and Wallachia in Romania. 
It is an ominous structure, originally built in 1377 to protect against invading forces, and later serving various roles from being a royal residence to a war hospital. Today, of course, it's most famous for its association with the Dracula legend, drawing visitors from around the world who are eager to explore its mysterious and gothic mysteries. With an amazing view over the surrounding countryside, giving it an ideal vantage point for defense in medieval times. The castle's thick walls and narrow, winding stairway give it a distinct medieval feel. Bran Castle's connection to the Dracula myth comes largely from its association with Vlad the Impaler, the 15th century prince known for exceedingly cruel punishments. There is, though, very little evidence to suggest that Vlad ever lived in Bran Castle, and it's not even clear if the castle is the one that Bram Stoker wrote about. The author never actually visited Romania, but descriptions of Bran Castle seem to closely match the Dracula castles described in his novel. Despite its mythical connections and the fact that most people visit with the hope of being scared, the true wonder of Bran Castle is in its rich history and architecture. Visitors can explore the many rooms and towers that house the art and furniture collections, depicting the life of the Romanian royals, with the particular highlight being the secret passage that connects the first and third floors, which was discovered during renovation works in the 1920s, and it further adds an element of mystery and intrigue to this amazing castle. Number 1. Sky Lodge, Peru when you travel to other countries, it's good to have a comfortable hotel room to return to after the day to rest and relax, but there's a place in Peru where you can keep the adrenaline pumping even while you're trying to sleep. The Sky Lodge offers one of the most unusual hotel experiences anywhere in the world and certainly makes for a memorable day. It can be found in the sacred valley of Cusco and features a series of Sky Lodge capsules that hang precariously off a cliff at a height approximately 1,300 feet above the valley floor. Each suite is a transparent capsule that's been built from aerospace aluminum and weather-resistant polycarbonate, providing a nearly unobstructed view of the Urubamba Valley and the Andean peaks that surround it. Measuring 24 feet in length and 8 feet in height, these capsules offer a space equipped with four beds, a dining area, and a private bathroom. Now, Despite their minimalist setup, the lodges are designed with essential comforts in mind, including high-quality bedding and interior lighting, ensuring as pleasant to stay as possible in the rugged setting. As you might have guessed, it's not a simple elevator ride to reach these rooms. Guests can choose between climbing a route using a series of metal ladders and cables embedded in the rock, or hiking an adventurous trail that includes zip lining. Both options provide a unique experience, and when you leave the morning, you'll have to rappel down the cliff. For some, this is the type of excitement that they look for in a vacation, but for others, like me, this is surely their worst nightmare. It does, though, give you a personal experience under a starlit sky, and with vast valleys stretching out beneath you, it makes it truly a once in a lifetime opportunity. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.